Hey everyone and welcome back to Monster Hunter World. On this video we're going to be doing our first assignment, Jagras of the Ancient Forest. So it's ready to go, let's jump in by pressing the touchpad. The part on the quest, press in the right stick to leave the quest. Alright, this is our first job. Let's do a quick review of quest rules. Rule number one, complete the objective to complete the quest. Easy, right? Each quest has an objective. You can't consider the quest done until you complete that objective. Our current objective is to eliminate a specified number of Jagras. Let's check the map. We ran into some Jagras on the way to base. The small monsters, remember? I think we saw them somewhere around here. Want to check it out? Rule number two, use the supply box. The commission supplies us with a loadout of certain items for each quest. They're in the supply box over there. Have a look and decide what you should take along. Ready to go. Okay, let's use the supply box. Oh, yeah. We get uh, four first aid meds, uh, three easy rations, restores a small amount of stamina, and 30 empty files. Oh, but I can't take that for some reason. And then there's a bunch of ammo and coatings if I was using a bow gun or an arrow, but I'm not. Okay. Want to get going? You have your supplies? Good. Let's go. Wanna get going? Uh-huh. Alright, it's so telling me how to use the item bar with L1. You can hold it. Or you can just... Or you can, uh, cycle through with the D-pad. I like just going through with the D-pad, although I probably should get used to holding L1 and doing it that way. Although it seems a little bit slower. To be honest. Let's put it on uh, first aid meds for now. Oh, wait. Oh, I see. That made him use it? Let's see. Er, no? Well, I don't really know how that works yet, but anyways, I just cycle through him with the D-pad, and I will figure out the other way soon enough. All right, and I should be sprinting. Ready your weapon before attacking. Keep in mind that what you're able to do depends on whether or not your weapon is drawn. When you're yeah. investigating or gathering items, you'll generally want to keep your weapon sheathed. I'll mark gathering sites and monster positions on the wildlife map for you. All right, we got an herb. Which I think is saying I could make two potions with it. I'm still learning all the with a potion to make mega potions. I'm still learning all the different stuff you can do. It's uh, a bit overwhelming. There's so many things to this game and different weapon types and it's a lot of information to take in, but luckily these quests starting out are fairly easy, so uh you don't need to know all the uh extra stuff. Over here. Right, hold on. I want to collect red pit, whatever that does. It's slinger ammo that can be used to hit far away plant life and bombs. Ah. And we got some needle berry. A nut covered in needle like spines used to make spread ammo. A pack of Jagras. Those are the monsters we're after. Let's see how you hold up when you're on your own. Alright, so this weapon, I still suck with it. I've been practicing with different weapons, trying to find one that I really like. Nothing's really been, uh,. Too enjoyable for me yet. I like the concept of this one. I just I haven't gotten very good at it. I don't know if it's a good weapon for me. Uh, I also practiced with the uh, what was it the bow gun. I like that, although it was kind of boring, but it was super effective. Uh, let's see, the great sword was just way too slow and hit. Just it hit really hard, but it's just way too freaking slow. 
And uh, what else did I try? I tried the sword and the shield. That I really liked, uh, but it was very basic. Had great maneuverability, um, but a little too basic for my taste. So I'm just going to kind of suck with this for a while, and hopefully I eventually figure out how to use it better. All right, well, I killed one of them. Let's see. Let's morph it to the other weapon. How do I do that again? There we go. All right, nope. Screwed that up. There we go. Did some damage. All right, whenever you kill... They're on the run. Don't let them get away. Whenever you kill one of these guys... All the monster materials you can. You can use them at the smithy. You want to uh, make sure you scan them to get their hides. It says, Jagras material obtained by carving... Supple, used to craft gear. And that's a jagger scale, uh, obtained by carving, used for many purposes. Uh, so let's see, what other weapons did I try? I tried... Alright, I tried a hammer. I really liked that in terms of its effectiveness, although it was kind of boring. It was a little too slow, um, and a little too basic. It had a charge up attack and then regular hits, and you were basically just trying to stun the enemies, so... Effective, but not very fun to use. And I also tried the charged blade, I think it is. The one that switches between a sword and axe. Similar to mine, although you don't get the shield. So it's not like a shield-sword combo, it's, it's just one weapon. Let's see, a parashroom, a mushroom that induces paralysis. Required to craft trank bombs. Mining outcrop. Got some iron ore, ore that can be smelted into metal and used for many different purposes. Alright, and I suppose I could keep looking around for stuff. Let's get this though, the bone pile. Monster Bone S, a material found in bone piles, indispensable for both hunting and daily life. And you can get a few from it. So yeah, I've been trying the different weapons and just nothing's really working for me. I'm hoping eventually I can get a better handle on this weapon, but so far I don't really like the weapon choices. Hopefully uh, one of them will be uh, more to my liking soon. Oh, and apparently I can mine this multiple times. Alright, and that's depleted. There's some other stuff around, but we're just going to move on. Whoops. Right, if I remember correctly, if I hit those yellow things, it'll, like, stun everything around. Ooh, that was nice. Oh, <laughs> sweet. All right, I got a guard. Oh, my health is low. Screw the potion. I'm fighting my way through here. Let's see. Let's hit that thing. Stun everybody up. You need to charge your attack. Okay. Back to I'm a noob, but I was good enough. All right. Let's see. I want to. Uh, I want to put it away. There we go. Crap. Kind of screwed up. I gotta get this stuff quick, or it's gonna kick me out of the mission. I've got 40 seconds to get all this stuff, and I could even kill a couple more. I don't know why they're not attacking me, it's kind of weird. But whatever, it lets me get the hides. Hi guys! Maybe it's because the mission's over, it makes them not attack. I don't know, I'm still learning. Also, you can see my weapon uh, sharpness is severely down on the uh, top left of the screen, but I believe that resets once you uh, enter a new mission, so I think we're good. Alright, mission done! So I'm hanging out with my Jagras friends. Alright, it took 7 minutes and 13 seconds, and we got a whole bunch of stuff. A Jagras scale... Sharp claws obtained from small fanged wyverns. Unlike wyvern, or wyvern claws, this is shaped to grip objects. 
No idea what that does, but let's go ahead and send it to the item box. Jagger scale. Jagger's hide. Another one. An armor sphere. Reacts uniquely to heat. Fuse this to armor to improve it uh, by a tiny amount. Uh, Macalite ore. Ore that's more difficult to procure than iron ore. Produces fine metal. Uh, an ancient bone. A bone used as crafting material. Can be found in bone piles in the ancient forest. Its size evokes a certain primal quality. And we got the Mandragora. A dangerous fungus said to draw the life out of people. Beware. Required to craft max potions. Wait, it draws the life out of people? Then why is it needed for potions? Oh, whatever. Let's take it. Oh, and my Palico got some stuff as well. He got an herb. Two herbs. Primary ingredient and potions. Got iron ore and an ancient bone. Oh yeah, Palico level two. His attack and defense have increased. A new cutscene has been added to the gallery and my gadget proficiency went up. Vigor wasp spray? I don't know what that means. I'm still learning. Good to see you. Fine work taking down those Jagras. Hmm, so there's no difference in their habitat. But their numbers are increasing. I see. Uh -huh. It may be stating the obvious, but the Jagras aren't the only danger lurking around these parts. We've also received ports of a Kestodon herd getting out of hand. This must be all because Zora Magdaros made landfall. It's got everything riled up. Listen up. Well, it's going to be your job to quiet them down. We'd like you to investigate this Kestodon herd and cull their numbers. I'm going along. Wouldn't want you to get hurt. You can now depart on quest with other players via an online session. Turn on voice chat function now. Uh, no. I don't want to hear other people talking. If you don't enable the voice chat, you can still play with them. You just won't hear them. So, turn that on. No. No, thank you. Alright. Now that you've got some materials, why don't we head over to the smithy to see what you can do with them? Alrighty. There's also some new people to talk to, uh... They should be popping up on my mini-map. Here's one over here. Chief Ecologist. Mm, yes? A hunter from the fifth, are you? Then you must have finished your first quest. This is ecological research, headed up by yours truly. Tell me, did you find any monster data out there? Tracks, gashes, that sort of thing? Data tells us a story about the monsters, an elaborate and interesting one at that. Your job in the field team is to track the monsters, collect data, and advance the study. Our job is to take that data, analyze it, and compile our findings for the commission. What we learn helps you out in the field, too. So you see, we need each other. I'll be here. Drop by here anytime and I'll show you what we're, uh, what we're working on. Uh, ecological research. Ecological research is a facility that studies monsters. Their studies can help you with your hunts and investigations. Gathering monster tracks and the like will earn you research points. Collect enough and your research level will go up, giving you access to new features and intel that will make your hunts easier. You can also consult the monster field guide to view monster info such as habitat, weaknesses, and materials that can be carved. Research levels do not increase automatically. When you see Report to the Ecological Research Team on the results screen, be sure to pay them a visit. In the Research Level menu item, you'll, uh, you'll also find your Scout Flies level, which determines, uh, determines their abilities. The higher your Scout Flies level, the sooner your Scout Flies will pick up the next set of monster tracks. Okay, so we have Research Levels. Uh, it's just got three large monsters we're working on. The first is Zora Magdaros. We have a Great Jagras and Anjanath. No idea. And then we have the Monster Field Guide. So these are large monsters. This is the Great Jagras, Fanged Wyvern. Uh, the pack leader of the Jagras. When hungry, Great Jagras are known to attack monsters even stronger than themselves. It balloons to unbelievable propor proportions after swallowing prey. 
Even after a giant meal, a great Jagras can use its expanded stomach to attack unsuspecting hunters. Aim for its belly to force it to vomit out its prey and significantly weaken it. And that's all we know about it. Then we have the Anjanoth. It's a brute wyvern. Uh, the Anjanoth patrols the ancient forest, looking for its favorite meal, Aptonoth. This belligerent monster will attack anything without hesitation. Anjanoth spit... Or Anjanoth spits fiery blasts from its mouth, utilizing a unique organ in its throat. Focusing attacks on its throat will make battling it much easier. Then we have Zora Magdaros. We've got zero info on him. Alright, for the small monsters, we have the Aptonoth. Docile herbivores that graze in packs. Their meat is considered, uh, considered a delicacy and is rich in nutrients. If one member of the herd is attacked, the rest will flee immediately. And low rank materials, raw meat. We have the Jagras. Members of the Great Jagras Pack. These smaller monsters will flee upon seeing one of their own perish. They're also known for ambushing larger monsters at a moment's notice. And they have Jagras hides, scales, and sharp claws. Okay, we're done over here. Let's see who else we've got. This person. Squad manager. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Fiverr. We're all ready to open our tavern and gathering hub, the Celestial Pursuit. At the gathering hub, you can meet up with other hunters and embark on quests together. To find the Celestial Pursuit, just look up. See that ship atop Astera that looks like it's about to sail off to the stars? That's it. You can get up there by taking the lift. <laughs> Please come visit us as soon as you get the chance. Alright, we'll do that in a bit. For now, though, I want to go to the smithy. There you are, Flavor. Aha! Look who's back with materials. Step right up and welcome to the smithy. You'll be needing my services a lot. What I do for you is simple. Whenever you go out in the field and gather materials, I turn those materials into weapons and armor. Drop by whenever you find something new and interesting. Here, I'll give you some materials as a welcome present. You can use them to upgrade your equipment. The smithy! You can use monster materials and ore to forge and upgrade equipment at the smithy. Give the materials you earn as quest rewards or carve uh, or carve from monsters. That was a weird sentence. Or carve from monsters to the smithy to create new equipment for taking on even tougher monsters. And it's just showing us how to carve up, which we already know. Although that's a big guy. Okay, so that's how you get the materials. Let's go next. So, let's go ahead and upgrade equipment. Use materials and money to upgrade equipment. And, uh... Sure, let's go with the armor. Upgrading armor. Each piece of armor has a level. You can use your armor spheres to gain points, which are used to raise your armor's level. The equipment's appearance won't change, but its defense will increase. There is a limit to the number of times a piece of armor can be leveled up. The number of points gained depends on the type of armor sphere used. Alright, so we did pick up a few armor spheres, so let's use one of them here. And that'll increase this to level 2, and double its defense, getting it up to 4. And it'll cost 40 zenny to do it. So let's do that. Okay, and we could upgrade another, but uh, I want to do a little more experimenting with gear before I start putting all my armor spheres to upgrading this stuff. So let's wait on that. We are going to upgrade my weapon, though. Upgrading weapons. First, select the weapon you want to upgrade to. You can use materials to upgrade to different weapons with a variety of improved stats. If you want more base weapons to enhance, you can create more by selecting forge equipment at the smithy, or by purchasing them at the armory. Upgraded weapons can also be downgraded. The materials used to upgrade the weapon will be returned to you. Select the weapon with the cursor and press triangle to add it to your wish list. Once you acquire all the necessary materials to create a wish listed item, you'll receive a message. You can add weapons and armor to your wish list from the forge equipment screen. 
All right, so uh, the weapons kind of have like a different paths you can follow. Um, so I can upgrade to the uh, whatever this is, the Proto Commission Axe 2. You can see the damage goes up to 324, the attack rather. Um, and that'll take two iron ore, which I have six of. Or I could go down here and make a bone strong arm. Or at least I thought I could. Let's see. Oh, never mind. I already have it. Is that what it's saying? Ah, yes. I've already got it, apparently. Oh, I see. It's for both morphs. Or no? No, no, I'm confused. Well, apparently I've already got the bone strong arm, so I can upgrade that with my monster bone S's, and that's 360 attack compared to 324. Hmm. Well, in that case, the bone strong arm seems to be the wise choice. Is there any other quality that this has that I'm missing? Everything appears to be the same except for the attack. Well, unless I'm missing something here, seems like I should go with the bone strong arm too. So let's go ahead and do that. Or uh, oh, it's under development. Or no, I'm confused. Why can I not? Cannot upgrade to this node. Well, I don't know. All right, well then that just means I have to get the Proto Commission X2. And that's gonna cost me 200 zenny, let's do it. Okay, and these higher upgrades I don't have the stuff for yet. I need some unknown ore. For that one, and a whole bunch of unknown stuff for that. So we're done there. Uh, let's see. Forge equipment. Forging equipment. New weapons and armor can be created by selecting forge equipment. Most weapons, however, can't be created via forge equipment. Instead, you'll have to make a base weapon first, and then upgrade it into a more powerful weapon via upgrade equipment. All armor can be created via forge equipment. Uh, equipment skills. Equipment skills are helpful skills that remain active as long as you have the piece of equipment equipped. Each armor piece has its own skills. Be sure to keep an eye on the skills when forging and upgrading your gear. If multiple pieces of gear share a skill, the skill's level will be the sum of each piece's skill level. Equip sets of gear with the same skills to power up those skills' effects. Alright, so you can create weapons and armor here. I got no need to do that right now, and I'm a little confused by it because I have the base weapon for most of these. Um, and it seems like you can only make base weapons, at least for now. So you can see, well, I could make the bone strong arm, actually. And perhaps I should. It does do more damage. Hmm. I wish I wouldn't have used my supplies there. Should we make the bone strong arm? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Oh jeez, am I gonna have to watch this every time? Let's see, can I skip it? I can skip it. I saw it once, that's good enough for me. Alright, so equip that. And then we need to go back to upgrade. Uh, where is it? Ha! Alright, so we can upgrade it to here for another 200 zenny. Much more damage. Oh good, it's skipping it automatically now. Alright, and further upgrades, not gonna happen. Okay, we have Forge Palico equipment. Standard equipment. Um, so we can make him some stuff if we wanted to, although I don't have the required material. Um, but not many options for him anyway. Bone and alloy, and that seems to be it. Actually, I could make that if I had the whatever that is, research, I think? Or palico points? I don't know. Whatever that is, I don't have it, so I can't do it. Then you can customize your bow gun if you're using a bow gun. 
Customizing bow guns. Bow guns can be enhanced by adding mods. The number of mods that can be added varies depending on the rarity of the bow gun. Multiple mods with the same effect will stack, further enhancing that effect. Rarity 1 to 2 gets 1 mod, 3 to 4 gets 2 mods, and 5 plus gets 3 mods. Use the right stick to scroll the center right window and view the changes caused by the, uh, caused by the added mods. So, uh, I do have a bow gun. I have two of them actually. A light and a heavy one. But, uh, I have no desire to mod these or use them in the near future. Manage Kinsex. Managing Kinsex. Insect glaives are used together with a Kinsect, and both can be enhanced independently. To get a new Kinsect, select Purchase Kinsect. To enhance an existing Kinsect, select Nurture a Kinsect. As you progress through the game, the menu option Kinsect Elements will be unlocked. There you can trade a power level to add one of the following elements. Fire, Water, Ice, Thunder, or Dragon. To equip a Kinsect, first equip the Insect Glaive you wish to pair it with. Then select the equipment box from the change equipment screen and choose a Kinsect. So if you're using the Insect Glaive, this is something you should be doing. Nurturing Kinsects or purchasing Kinsects and nurturing them up. And then you can change your equipment here if you like. Okay, we're done there. We have the Airship Engineer. So, the fifth has arrived. Greetings. Greetings there. I'm the airship engineer with the second fleet. I work on flying machines, airships, and what have you. I'm sure you're curious about why you haven't met a member of the third yet. That's because they've all been stranded for years. It wasn't long after the scholars from the third landed before they insisted upon crossing the Great Ravine. So, they got their ship converted into an airship, and off they went. It was going well until just after they'd crossed the ravine. A flying monster attacked their airship and grounded them. Sure, they were reckless to go, but seeing as I'm the man who put them in the air, I can't help but feel partly responsible for it all. Ever since then, I've been working on making a better airship, one that we could use to go rescue them. But between the New World's nasty weather and the strong winds hurling down the ravine, it's been one failure after another. Still, you won't catch me calling it quits. Okay, uh, let's see. Anything else? I need to talk to my handler to continue the main story. Uh, but before we do that, let's go to the gathering hall or whatever it's called. I think it's up here. Yeah, the gathering hub. The Gathering Hub. The Celestial Pursuit is a gathering hub where up to 16 players can get together for a hunt. It contains the following. Arena counter slash quest counter. The squad manager. The notice board. Canteen slash your room slash hub provisions. You can also engage fellow hunters in arm wrestling and other fun activities. Most of the facilities listed above are also available during offline play. Arena counter slash quest counter. Here you can participate in arena quests and complete against or and compete against hunters from all over the world. Uh, two, the squad manager, the reception desk for the in-game community. Three, the notice board. Check here for your login bonuses and important notices. And four, canteen slash your room slash hub provisions. These offer the same services as their HQ counterparts. Okay, let's start with the squad manager. Hello, welcome to the Celestial Pursuit. So, are you ready to squad up? Squads. Squads are invite-based in-game communities. Join a squad and you'll gain access to a members-only online session. Get a squad icon and name above your character's name and on your guild card. Be able to leave messages for squad mates even if they're not online. And more. So join up today and add a whole new dimension to your game. Non-squad members can join a squad's online session via invitation or by entering the online session ID. You can join a squad by creating your own or by being invited by another player while in the gathering hub. You can belong to up to 8 squads at once, so feel free to team up with different groups of friends and other hunters with common goals. One squad can have up to 50 members. 
Only squad leaders have permission to invite and remove members from the squad. Alright, so I'm going to create an All the Shiny squad, and if any of you would like to join, you are welcome. I don't know if I have to invite or what, but first I need to make a squad emblem. So I found a shiny little thing here. Not my first choice, but it's it's the best I, I saw of the bunch. And then I'm going to make that a gold. And then I want to go to my emblem shape. I'm going to use this like chain around the edges, the circular chain thing. And we'll make that gold as well. And that's good enough. Not super thrilled with it, but I couldn't find anything better that I liked. So let's finish up. And it's going to be all the shinies. Create a new squad, yes. All right, the squad is created. I don't know how you guys join, but if you can do it on your own, by all means, join up. We'll play together. And uh, I'm going to need some people to help me on Arena Quest because I can't seem to get any random people. It just doesn't grab anyone. It's very strange. I'll show you what I mean in just a bit. Oh, and we got a login bonus. Get your login bonus by pressing triangle. Sure. Let's see. Information. Horizon Zero Dawn collaboration content now available. The quest Lessons of the Wild available until February 8th. Check the official website for info on more available event quests. And then add-on content now available. Download free hairstyles and classic gestures. Uh, I got a lucky voucher, whatever that is, and I got three energy drinks. Sure, I'll pretend I know what that means. All right, so that's the canteen, just like the canteen downstairs. That goes off to an expedition, apparently. Hello. Hello, hunter. If you need to stock up something before hunting with your buddies, you've come to the right place. So, what can I get for you? Uh, nothing. And she's got the same stuff as the guy in the headquarters, so. Nothing different as far as I can tell. The arena counter. Hi, welcome to the arena counter. We have a special quest today. We have a special quest for you today. That's right, an arena quest. Just need to think of a good name for it. Best of luck to you in there. Looks like you'll need it. It's the arena. There's monsters in it. You fight them. But please, take your time looking at the quest list. Alright, so um, if you want to start a quest or join a quest, it's the same as starting or joining a quest downstairs. Uh, but they're different. Arena quests. Arena quests take place in the arena with a fixed equipment set. Compete against others for the fastest slaying time. Once complete, you'll receive a reward based on your time and see how you stack up against hunters worldwide. Arena quests, uh, standard arena quests, and then challenge quests. Arena quests that are available for a limited time only. Up to two players can participate in each multiplayer arena quest, which can be started from the arena counter. You cannot join arena quests that are already in progress. The leader can register your time on the world rankings. So, under arena, we have arena quest one. Um, slay a puki puke, maybe? Let's see, if that was Japanese, it'd be Puke Puke, yeah. I believe I said that right. Um, so I would love to do this, but I need a partner in order to get that rank A at the bottom. Two minutes and 30 seconds. By myself, the best I was able to do was a 640, I think? And I did that with the bow gun. So um, you only get five weapon choices here, which is where I did my experimenting with other weapons. Um, that first one is a great sword. Awful. I hated it. Way, way too slow. Uh, next is Sword and Shield, I believe. Liked it, but very basic. Very good at dodging and hitting. Hit and run tactics. I kind of like that. Uh, that third one is the Hammer. Um, kind of went over that earlier. Effective. A little slow, but very effective. Stuns enemies well. Does a buttload of damage. Uh, the Charged Blade or Charged X, whatever those are classified as. I just sucked at it. I apparently am very bad at the... Uh, Weapon morphing. I, I terrible with the one I currently have, but hopefully over time I will learn how to master it. And then the bow gun, which was rather boring, but uh, 
Did some pretty good damage. Had a whole bunch of tricks. Lots of different abilities and stuff you can use. Different ammo. You can really lock down monsters well with it. And then you can do a bunch of damage with the wyvern shot things that you put on the ground. So it's it's got interesting abilities and things that you can use, but I still wasn't a big fan. Okay, so we'll leave that for later. Challenges, there's none available. Okay, this is just the quest counter, just like the one downstairs. So, what do you have to, or what will you have to dre- Oh, crap, I keep forgetting. Ahem. What quest can I set you up with? Alright, then take a gander. Apparently she used to be a bartender. So, yeah, you can see it's the same quests as downstairs. We have the assigned, which the new one hasn't popped up yet. Optional, um, apparently it was the same- Jagras one under optional, although it's called the Thicket of Thugs. Already completed though. And events, uh, there's two right now. One's level two, one's level five. We'll be doing those a bit later. Okay, the room is right here. And right here, if somebody else was here, you can apparently arm wrestle. I'm warming up for myself. So yeah, I guess you'd just have to wait here till someone arrived. But there's no one here. I don't know why this just does not seem to be a popular area. You would think the gathering hub would be full of people, but uh, that's not the case at all. So hopefully, uh, once I build up the squad, We'll have a bunch of uh, squad members in here, because otherwise I don't know. So, uh, that's pretty much everything here. Let's go back down and talk to the handler. I want to go to the canteen. Oh, and I suppose I should... Well, I was going to say I should get some food before I start, but uh, I'm not actually going to start this, so... We'll just talk to her, and then on the next video, I'll have to remember to get food before we begin. Hey there, partner. Right, so the next thing we need to take care of are those Kestodon. The chief said he'd be tagging along with us. How about we start our search in the ancient forest and go from there? <gasps> oh, and I've got some good news. We handlers post all the leads we find up on the quest board. You can sign up for quests there, too, so you, can, uh, so you don't always have to come all the way up here. But then again, you might miss out on all the eats up here. You can pick up quests from the quest board too. It lists the same quests that I've got, so don't worry about having to check two places. Okay, and we just need to accept that new assignment, which we'll be doing on the next video. So, we are all done for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.